Hi and welcome to Odyssey of Ascension. This is Roxy once again. Thank you all for tuning in. It is Friday, Q&A Part 10, uh, number, Q&A Number 10, Part 2. Mm -hmm. So we'll finish up the questions today and then uh, we're going to rock the weekend. Exciting. All right. Uh, you ready to read it? I am. All right, step. This first question is from Lorani N. What is the name of the civilization from Andromeda, and could you please tell us a bit about them? <laughs> the Andromedans, they dress blue. They have what you would call a light blue with tinges or fringes of darker blue. It is a robe-like outfit that they wear in majestic fashion. They usually only have one outfit. They're averaged between seven and nine feet tall. They have thin eyes, piercing if you would, that matches the color of a, let's call a royal blue, and they are the Andromedans. Now that is one current civilization version. The Andromedans are, let's say, most experienced in incarnations within this idea, density, Octavia, different ideas of this universe. So there are other versions and different nows of understanding, depending, depending on where you tune into them. This is their current now that is most equatable to the now that you know. Although the other nows of what you call past and future do visit, and there might be different physical and, let's say, vibrational appearances to you. And that's who they are. What do they do? They have fun, truly. Go ahead. This is from Cole S. Hello, Cole. Um, every time I witness movie scenes of what Chem or Egypt look like, I feel such a strong connection. Mm -hmm. Or every time I listen to certain music, it brings me back to that time. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, who was I um, strongly connected to in that timeline? It feels as if I was a pharaoh or a god goddess. Yes, most of humanity wants the romance of being a pharaoh. And let's say there was one pharaoh compared to 10 million idea regular Joe Blows. Well, let's say you were a regular Joe Blow for about 17 incarnation cycle lifetimes in what you call the Egyptian era. You died many times because you were helping build the pyramids. And you all did have different idea tunes, whistle while you work in that idea fashion. It is not the idea of the slaves that we've interpreted today in such the idea fashion that humanity interprets slaves to be. They were more of a idea surf. In the idea of a serf, they were mm, peasantry in a way, but they also had many rights and they also had their folk lore and folk music. And these are the music ideas that take you back to that space time now that you can reference in your own remembrance of that now that's going on and all of those other nows of that particular time. That is all. Uh, this question is from Damien. Um, over the last days, I've noticed that my sexual desire has diminished. Uh, what I'm trying to say is I don't feel physical sexual attraction to women, even if they are super hot. Porn doesn't turn me on anymore like it used to do a couple of months ago. I feel like if I'm not connected to that person, I don't want to share my energy with them. It's like I want to be in love and share a connection with the girl that I want to have intimate relations with. I want to know if that is normal or I'm missing something. Thank you very much for all your work. There is nothing that not, is not normal. I want you to understand vibration for a second. The idea of vibration is everything in your ideal world. Vibration is everything. Vibration is everything. Interpretation of vibration is everything. Since you have the construct, I don't want to, then you're going to give yourself realities of I don't want to. You have an expectation of falling in love, so once again you can have a sexual appetite towards that idea person. So you're pigeonholing yourself into a category of a space and a time in some future using the references of lack to get there. So how about this? Let go of what you're feeling in the now, and in your words, be normal about it. Of course, there is no normality. That is an illusion in and of itself. Normality is current to the 
psyche of the collective whole as an acceptable term. So in your terms, in this now, let go of being this or that about what you have, you must say, now to the past. Porn idea no longer turns you on, so don't watch porn. Just know it's not your appetite. It is much like the idea of the wealthy. They have no fear about poverty. What they have is a vibration that they just don't prefer, the vibration of poverty. They have no interest in poverty. You have an interest in the idea of why you are not having sexual desires. Therefore, the repetition remains because you are vibrating, vibrating, vibrating a lackful idea of that moment for yourself to perceive. So, in the idea, if you were divinely indifferent or nonchalant in some terms about not having your sexual desires, much like the wealthy do not have any vibration about poverty in any way, shape, or form, that idea of what you are seeking without seeking will be offered effortlessly in the nows to come. Go ahead. Uh, this question is from Merjo. Are we already enlightened and we do not know it, yes. or is enlightenment something to be achieved? I would never say it's being achieved. Enlightenment is the moment. Enlightenment is always you in the moment, my friend. Understand that freedom of the self of limitation is enlightenment. You've lightened up. You don't care about the things in the past. You have no concern about your safety or your future. You are just blissful now. How much more enlightened do you want to be? Ah, there is that clinical term that the spiritual world has brought forth in an idea of... <sighs> An achievement to be enlightened, gaining some sort of status. Of course, that's an egoa construct, and that's wonderful to play if you choose. Be enlightened unto yourself, for you are your own creator of your own light. There is no enlightenment save that of your own. Be free from your own idea shades, your darkenings, your shadows. And you will perceive enlightenment in your individual, gorgeous, beautiful, loving, unconditional way. Truth. Uh, this is from Life is Awesome. It is. Yeah. Some time ago, I knew two people whose face kept changing, like being a different person, constantly while talking. They talk nonstop. Thanks to you, I now know that we oscillate in and out of reality. Did they also change personality? Yes. Yes, they absolutely did. You change the perception in all vibrations, so therefore, whatever vibration you perceived that idea of personality. It's not just the appearance, the entire vibration. So yes, the personality changed along with the appearance because the appearance is created by the version of the personality within, the filters that created that. So in other words, if you feel you are overweight, then you will be overweight into the mirror. Everyone will perceive you as overweight, that idea, but that's the physical. They projected that, but that's still a vibration of how you view yourself within. So if you had no views of yourself as being overweight, your physical appearance, which comes secondary to the vibration of the first, will of course appear that way in the nows to come with no reverence of you of trying to lose weight in that idea of parallel understanding. Go ahead. Uh, Soro Fleet uh, asks about sound healing with the voice. Any mm -hmm. ideas I can play around with, maybe how they might have done it in Lemuria or Atlantis, or well, let's any, not use another construct on this now. Go ahead. Or any techniques I can explore into. I'm having fun exploring it with my intuition, and I'd be interested to know if you had any shiny new things to play with. The shiny new thing is exactly what you've been doing. <clears throat> the reliability on how the Lumerians and, of course, the Hathors did it in times past has no idea construction for needed in those reference points with you individually, Soru, for your intuition abounds about this, for you have much like the composer within you. You have a structure of a self, a self with many experiences. And whatever is known on earth, you have a self about that, truly. So in that idea, you know you are a sound healer. Find the self within that composes this idea within you to bring that knowledge and understanding and evolution to the conscious self of separation to now give you that own gift, ability that lies within. You need no guidance anymore. You have done enough work for yourself. It is just releasing that idea of trust that you can, and I am my own God, to do so as I choose. But you are trustworthy enough unto the self, so you may do so. Excellent work, so.
Hello. Uh, the next question is from Cindy Lee. Hello, Cindy Lee. I was having a rough time sleeping, and I was in and out of sleep state for a period of time last night. At some point, I looked over my shoulder to the edge of my bed, and there was a girl sitting there who appeared to be talking to someone standing in front of her. As soon as I made my awareness of her known, she pushed me very firmly with her hands on my back to roll me back over as if she didn't want me to look at her. I can still feel the pressure of her hands pushing my back. It was so real. It was real. I jolted myself awake and out of that state because it startled me. Something similar happened to me months before when I felt a small animal jump on my bed and tiny paws walking across my body and snuggling up to the side of my face. I still remember the weight of those little paws walking on me. My question is, are these spirits or what are they? They're not spirits and they are spirits. Not the spirits and the idea you're thinking about. But it is spiritual, so you can call it spirits if you choose. So in that idea, you are re <clears throat> realizing or frequency understanding in relationship to reality through your lucid dreaming of release of what's real to receive other here and nows that you are a part of. So now that you understand that is you, a self of you, a parallel you, as well as a past and a future you, up to you how you perceive it, then you now know and understand the relationship with the animal as well as the little girl talking to someone else. Trust the intuition. We will not be your crutch on this one. Move forward in your own trust. Go ahead. Um, this is from Susanna. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. Is there a soul's purpose or not? No. If, if we can choose to believe and be whatever we want... Then be a soul purpose. If there is, and we find the purpose and surrender to it, does it get easier? I have this constant sadness and pain I can't get rid of no matter what I do. Because you're trying to find a purpose. The purpose is now. I'm a forgotten God wandering on earth. My higher self creates a status quo of a purpose. There's one purpose in life, yet I'm a forgotten God. So one day I decide to turn left instead of right. And my purpose is lost for this lifetime. And I have to do it again until I find that purpose through the haphazard idea of chance, in your words, to find that idea. If not, I'll do it again and again and again and again. That's a lot of wasted nows. See, all nows are purpose. All nows fill the heart of the soul. The idea of you creating wholeness within you. You're miserable because you don't have anything to do. You just can't accept that you can just be God, period without any foraging ideas to create a status quo of a purpose so others may admire you in your adventures of purposely filling your wet life not wasted upon the idea of laziness and being judged for your non-action of interaction. Things like that. So release yourself from these bindings that you've tendrilled up around you and you forge in the ideas and now create your misery over and over again because your vibration is screaming lack because I can't find my purpose. Your purpose is whatever you want to be. You find it now, you play with it. When the shiny thing is done, you move on. We are explorers. We move through realities, wisping through the ideas of the nows forever to fill our hearts with the desires of the now, the will of creation. We do not wait in time to find a purpose, for then we are in the idea of paralyzation, and we cannot move ourselves beyond that until the satisfactory idea of reference points to your own experience. Your thought of logic says this is the purpose, and you can release yourself and drive forward from the fractal self to be the idea of that status quo so you can be worthy of the journey into humanity. Or not. Freedom. Choose. You could just say you can be a party and have fun. <laughs> that is a good purpose. Awesome purpose. Tom loves to party. Loves to have fun. The next question is from Dan... Daniel H. and there's two parts. Wonderful. Okay, so during very early growing pains of my journey, 
After discovering that everything is my own reality, I was very awkward and weird and sometimes very rude to some people in my life who I care deeply about. As a result, there is an ambiguous, unresolved, and stress stressful tension between us. Unresolved because of you. And it feels like there's a hole in my heart as long as this resolution is going unsatisfied. Yes. Can you please feel into this specific circumstance that I seemingly face and offer some guidance? Because you feel guilty for your actions of being a forgotten god. I did an action upon another. I created an idea of hurting them. I betrayed them. I mistreated them. And then that's your definition of guilt through the nows. And you want to know how to change it, but you won't release yourself from the action of a forgotten God. They're lost too, as you are, journeying home as you choose. You cannot have regret because regret is in time and there is only now. No one looks at the good reasons why you choose an idea. Everyone finds the regret first, for you were taught that child. Why? Why do you choose to be regretful when you completely forgot? And through your idea of coveting systems, maybe you were smart enough in this ecosystem of polarity to be that of worthy to every single individual. No. You have to be yourself. See, you're not perceiving what they were perceiving. You're only perceiving how you think they were perceiving. See, you were a dragon in that moment and you took a nice yummy dump, as Osithius would say, as well as Sly, upon their lawn, and you walked away. And you let them clean it up. It's not your responsibility, but your guilt for changing lives and allowing people, entities, forgotten gods, to see a new portion of reality. And you're guilty about your own actions? Your own love in the moment? See, you would have never been the self you are now, ever, without those choices. You would be a different self, a different timeline, a different now, a different version. You would be focused on that you and that now, not this you and this now. So release yourself. Pointers, stop. Let it go. Don't apologize. Because then you give your authority to them as if they have a standard that is more, let's say, acceptable than yours. You have given your authority to them. You may take it back. If it hurts... Allow the hurt. Bathe in the pain. See the thin and veilness of those iniquities you call fears. The illusion that you distort from love into love, viewed by you as fear. Choose. Go ahead. The second part of Daniel's question, um, is there a message to humanity from the realm of microscopic creatures such as bacteria or protozoa, etc.? Thanks for letting us hitchhike. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, Kayleen is the next questioner. Uh, I have been told to honor the north, east, south, and west, and to honor the air, wind, fire, water, and the space. How do I go about doing this? Why are you not honoring this airplane? Why are you not honoring this fingernail? Why are you not honoring your computer? Why are you not honoring all of reality? There is nothing in this reality that is not consciousness. There is nothing ever that is not unconditional love. Yet polarity tells you to honor as in some kind of idea that you're less than. We are honored to be here among humanity. That's our honorship. See, you are choosing an ownership out of an idea of a structure because they are here for you. Bullshit. They're here because you chose it to be here. They're here because they chose to be here. So my ownership is to myself. For giving myself the gift of co-creating with humanity. So your creation of wind and north and south and all your other idea appetites of romance that say ownership is due diligence, Gaia for being an Earth, all of those are experiencing unto themselves. There is nothing now, Emira, nothing. So how about this? As a stepping stone, honor yourself for choosing the greatest journey of all in our nows to see humanity. From limitation, mm beauty that it is into the unlimited 
beauty that it is. Truly. Go ahead. Um, this is from Chihiro T. Gazenta. Um, I've just got two amazing dream job offers, but I decided to turn down both because there were time conflicts with my other important project. Important! I've been feeling really painful thinking about giving them up because these two offers look perfect for me, but the other project that has the time conflict with the dream job offers is also very important to me. Ah, what's more important? Stop. Okay, is there more? Yes. Yes. Did I do something wrong, like <clears throat> I was not vibrating at a good place, resulting in attracting this conflict? No. Or is it because that those two dream job offers were just not for me? What can I do to make the right decision concerning which one to choose in this kind of conflicting situation? The right decision <laughs> is made from the self of love in the moment. See, you've never made a wrong decision, but now that you're doubting because there is something about not doing your dream jobs, the job in and of itself has a definition. Vibration is everything. And we'd like you to look at this perspective. <clears throat> Importance. There's nothing important in reality. That's saying something is more relevant than something else. Than laying waste to the relevance to the category of irrelevant. Giving a vibration of lack within your reality. Everything is vibration. So, you have opportunities abound. You have five idea nows to choose. They're all relevant, but one sings to you. But now let's go to the importance. Oh, I dare say entity importance had an outcome. There was a future of hope with all of these ideas. And then you meticulously weighed them on the scale of outcome and achievability and safety and security as who and what would make more money and be happier to do, and make my nows be more excellent than now. And the conflict ensued, because you were fucking with limitation. Choose what you will, and the world becomes that. You cannot miss the dream job, because the dream job is always there, in the idea of a different form, if you don't choose it now. Your important project will end in time. And what will be next is the idea. But you don't need to be concerned with that. You find what you love and do it in the moment. And that creates endless unknowns for you to perceive. To translate those vibrations of bliss into your own reality, creating the seamless idea of fluidity of bliss for now and forever. But you are conflicting, doubting, and that you are recessing to the pool of wisdom that you call knowledge with your fractalized mind of logic to figure this out. And then, of course, you judged yourself because you may have fucked it up. You can't. Question is, which one do you love the most? With taking every, 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 every ounce of time out of it, and whatever constructs and time says that is important other than the now. All of that is diminished in your eyesight. And then you will find the beating heart of the love of your projects, your dream jobs. But why even have a job? Is that your own worthiness? You have to have a job. To then, 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 then you can have an unjob. Is your job that of a structure of time and obligation? Or is it just now the bliss? You do not need to tendril abundance with jobs because abundance is created in the now in the exchange of energy. And it shows up in a boundless way. Yes, a boundless ways of unknowns, but you limit them. You funnel them. You tie them to a tiny little idea flag and say, that's abundance and there's the idea in time and I will follow that trek to keep myself safe because I am not worthy of an unknown God. Choose what you will. Choose. Go ahead. This is from Judith Daly. Hello, Judith Daly. Uh, and it's a question about relationship patterns. Mm -hmm. I've only loved two men in my life. Both of them I fell for at first sight. 
Yes. With both situations, they both had girlfriends when I developed feelings for them, but after one to three years, I eventually manifested a relationship with them, but they never felt love for me as deeply as I did for them. Because you were loving out of lack. You cannot make another person love you. Uh, thanks for playing. It's a mirror. Trying to look for other people to love you is your lack of love for the self. Confining them to ways to love you, which gives a vibratory uneasiness between the two in the relationship. You're trying to make them fall in love with you in the other underneath the guise of what you perceive love should be. And of course, repeat. Because that's what you're good at. You're very good at limitations. You're very good at cycling relationships. You're very good at self-defeating. Because the deservership must be constructed from the idea of what you perceive a romantic relationship to be. <clears throat> from the idea of a past self. A child that says this is romance, this is love, through the construction of what is and what is not romance as you were growing up and then taking those beliefs and then forging it forward and putting it on an idea of a carrot, a stick before you to follow that idea, to follow that shiny road, to that's romance, and if it doesn't look like that, it doesn't look like that, and then you finally get the wisping idea that it's happening, and you dive in and you make it just so. But see, that's resistance against you. Everything is vibration in your screaming lack of self-love. I mean, it's just loud and thunderous to the all about you, and the one who love you could not love you the way they were, wanted to. See, love is unconditional. I cannot condition my love. I cannot put you in bindings. I love you as you are, for I love me as I am. Mm -hmm. Finish the idea. Is it? Pardon me? Was that all? Yes. Wonderful. Never seemed to be the one. Go ahead. Um, the last question is uh, from Anya from Holland. Anya from Holland. And she has a question about her health for Osipias. She's missing her cat. No. No, there's another one. There's something else. Yes. Your <laughs> cat is not missing. It's not lost. Cats don't get lost. Cats wander. If they feel like coming home, they will. If they don't, they don't. The attachment for that is, a re let's say, a reliability. Hmm. Let it go. Let the cat be the cat. And then you can sing joyfully in that future now. The cat came back the very next day. The cat came back. He thought he was a goner. Okay, but her question is about her toe. Her toe. She, she went to the hospital for... Today I went to the hospital for my big toe from the fork. And the doctor said that I have uh, perhaps a tumor in my toe. Now I must have a CT scan, so... What is going on with that? You have an injured toe, and you're using the permission slips of creation to get it fixed. Don't worry about what happened. See, all of you discount the idea of the immediate moment of something, and you're not letting it play out to see the way it's going to unfold. I'm sick. I need to go to the doctor. You go to the doctor, can you imagine the experience of an awoken dragon in the middle of a doctor's office, the vibration? See, all of you, to one degree or another, are viewing in the dependency of your senses to see how you are affecting the world when your vibration pulsates wherever you are. And if you are screaming other than status quo, then you are giving love to the room. Love to the company that you keep. So you go to the doctor's office and you brighten their day. How beautiful you are. Is this it, Roxy? You're gonna have to do this. Daniel M. has a question. Retract, Daniel Hanley. Oh, kindly disregard my last email. Okay, we shall do so. It feels like I have an inordinate amount of guilt and shame in my field of energy. It seems like how large it is compassion with my personal journey. la di da -di, everybody. Same thing. We already answered the question about the idea of yes, guilt. Yes, that was Daniel. That was Daniel. That was Daniel. 
So I changed it, said Roxy says. Excellent. Good work, Roxy. Next. We're moving right along. <laughs> Bridget. Bridget B. Hi, Roxy. The question is, what can I do? Sometimes I'm in a frenzy. Everything is easy. I can feel the wisdom and live in it and I'm happy. Live in it and I'm happy. But then this forgetfulness, I'm lost in a material world. Please, when is it possible to give me some inside in view, overview? What's helpful to me, for me? Thanks a lot. What can you do? Uh, Who was that? That was Bridget. Oh. Okay. Birgit, rather. Because that's almost exactly the same question that Marina Kim asked. Yes. Sometimes I'm in a frenzy. Everything is easy. Yes. Let's give you this idea. How many times have you heard that famous quote of humanity? Let's get back to reality. Okay? And that's a resounding theme. I'm having too much fun. I'm having a good time. Ah, oh, fuck. I need to get back to reality. See, that's your social acceptance of being serious about life. You can get right back into the reproductive, productive, reproductive, productive cycle of life until you die. Sucks the high hard one, Roxy says, truly. The idea, guys, is to accept your reality as it is, because that's the vibration of the now. The vibration of the now never ceases. You have forgotten, haven't you? Through the structures of the teachings, you've fallen upon your ears that you are unconditional love. The mirror is vibration. It is now that you are. Look around. You are that. Look around. You are that. Instantly. Change it, mirror changes instantly. But you can't see it. You are judging it. And you are wondering why. A. B. If you are not running interference on your unconditional love that flows out and back, and flows out and back, and you take your filters of deception that you've created for yourself as a personality construct and you drop them, what flows back? Love. That's why things are good. But if you say they have to be bad, then you're God, and so be it. No one's going to save your ass because you're God. Your free will in your bubble. That's it. Forever. So, you're happy. Leave it alone. Get out of your way. The presentations of things to do, actions to take, in the equality of a blank canvas to the artist, in equality to the lump of fresh clay to the sculptor, the blacksmith, new fire being forged, that freedom of passion to create is abounding. But you have categories of fun, and they are referenced from the past. I dare say you can find five things in your reality that would be exciting, and there are billions. But see, you can't see them because you're always taking the five things as the only way to measure the opportunities around you. And if it doesn't feel like that or look like that, you would say no to that instead of following the shiny thing. What's it going to do? Where is it going? Is it a waste of my time? And you keep going down that cycle, leaving you paralyzed in the now, wondering why shit isn't changing. Pardon me. So what do you do? You stop thinking. Vibration. Vibration. Definition creates the mirror now. And you can change it from hero to zero to hero in an instant moment, from the highest bliss to the lowest sufferings in an instant moment because you are God. And it all occurs now. If you are a natural, unconditional love, state of being, entity of existence, then that would be your natural state without any distortions. Leave it alone and allow the fine things, shiny things, good Roxy, fun things, shiny things, to allow them to come in and start to play with them. But if it is a chore, much like our idea of trying to find the right dream job and project 
if it is a chore, if it is work, if you go down that alley because it has an outcome of safety and lack of the future and making sure and setting up your fail-safes of prevention of tumbling down the rabbit hole of degradation. Degradation. Hmm. That's what happens if you leave that alone. The only thing that'll come is love. Don't judge the nows. Be the nows. Allow the nows. Trust. Vulnerability. Allowance. Naked. And you will find only bliss. Because that's what you are. All you have to do is let go of the constructs of the separated self of personality that say it is so. And trust your unknown nows to be that of the unknown God. And in nows you will see that forming, developing. Do not judge the miracles. Accept all that is given to you. Do not deny others the gift of giving. Be the self of now and watch how the miracles come. They may be small, but do not categorize. Do not look for the large escape. Oh, this was awesome, but I need to win the lottery because that would save my ass from now. Lap, vibration, now, shift, mirror, new reality. Is that it? Yes. How exciting. Would you two have any questions? Rita? Mm. Sure. Um, could you talk about Hollow Earth? Hollow Earth slash Middle Earth. Same ideas. Slash, what is it, Tommy? Agartha. Agartha. Absolutely. You have many different densities within those densities. Frequency relationships. See, what we like to do in the idea of the Middle Earth, in that I... Okay, we have a guest. Cool. Akashika bids you a good day. This is Buford, Buford T. Ferry. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> mm. Coffee. Hollow Earth, Middle Earth. I'm here and now and I got vibrations of the fairy world. I go like this, mm, shift my vibration and I'm hanging out with the sprites and the pixies. But we all interchange. And then if I change a little bit more, poof, I'm in the idea of Gartha. And there I am walking along in my own reality. And I actually don't walk along. I just shift and my room shifts. Because we have so many ideas on top of each other in that idea. Because we have no, let's say, room or space in your terms. See, we can't bump into each other because we just shift our frequencies and we're always on top of each other. Just like you guys are on top of us and we're on top of you at the same time. Relationship to reality, relationship to reality. You relate in vibration, but you are thinking you're relating in your senses. Uh, if it's not real, I can't touch it. Oh. Vibration. Oh my God, Roxanne. Speaking of vibration. It's Darth Vibrator. <laughs> oh my goodness. Luke, who's your daddy? Oh <laughs> I love it, Roxy. That's you are a slut. That's hysterical. <laughs> so, in that idea, that's Hollow Earth. Many different species of unicorns hang out in guys' groves. They have their own civilization in that idea. And, but they also come and visit with us, and there's many different frequencies happening down there. So they're all there, and let's say <clears throat> when humanity visits, and there have been many visitors to that idea, and there's many still hanging out there, they understand because it feels weird, okay, when they get there. And they're brought in through the idea of portals. And it's an unknown, but there's enough comfort around them to give them that idea of, okay, this is okay. And just like everyone else remembers in the idea of humanity, we're born in that idea, created in that idea, so we automatically know it, just like you knew how to relate this to reality. What happens is, is much like you get in the water, and it's cold at first if you're in that idea, but then after a while you're kind of okay with it. When you get out, it's really cold. You're changing vibrations. 
So in that idea, when humans would come in, they get used to the vibration of that frequency. And then the ones that understand frequency vibration can shift in and out of the world. Because it's always here and now. So they're in the living room, they vibrate at the frequency they are familiar with. They feel themselves, they do not think themselves. Uh uh, don't think about oh oh no 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 don't think about it. Feel it. So when you feel that idea, they, those humans that have that idea ability, just vibrate into Gaia's groves, into the idea of fairyland, hanging out with the pixies, hanging out with the idea of Agartha and the Naga, and all that play in that wonderful land of Middle Earth or Hollow Earth, what call it what you will. Good enough? Thank you. Yeah, cool. Sounds like fun. Sounds like a blast. So you're already there in one of yourselves, you know that. As a uh, Naga. As a Naga, yeah. Yes. We love the Nagas. Slippery suckers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm having a little bit too much fun, Roxy says. And I say, bitch, there ain't nothing, nothing but fun. Nothing but fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're sending her to the loonies. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Where Roxy has a party to go to. She's going to be a witch. Cool. Yes. Where's her hat? It's, it's in the back of the rest of the Oh. You want the hat? Yeah, let me have the hat. I want to wear the hat. I want to feel like witchy poo, witchy yeah. poo, witchy poo. I want to feel like witchy poo all day long. I do like look forward to being able to someday go to Agartha. Oh, someday right. you will. Yeah. Yes. Oh, look yes, at the witch yes. hat. That's on my bucket list. Let's look at the witch hat. Yes. How's it look? It's awesome. Yeah. And what's fun is... I like that it's floppy. I like yes, you can floppy hat. bend it around. I want to do that. <laughs> Hi. Okay, now that's Buford. Okay. Come on down. <laughs> Come, children. There's lots of candy in here. <laughs> Fucker, he is so funny. Right? <laughs> I love that he's... Okay, I do like the hat. It's really cute, don't you think? I'm yes, it's like adorable. It. Yeah, it's a great little witch thing. I'll take pictures, I'll post them on Facebook. I love you guys. Thank you all for tuning in for the Q&A. We'll see you next week. The live Q&A is November 12th, Saturday, 11 a.m. Central. Until then, we'll see you in the next nows. I love you guys. Bye.